If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that I like to dig a little bit deeper into common scams. And this video covers a few techniques and tools to find out a little bit more about who's behind this advanced fee fraud. If you don't already know, 419 is the law number within the country of Nigeria where this sort of fraud is rife. And invariably, you're promised a very large sum of money in return for sending some fees in advance. So when I got this email out of the blue in February, I was convinced this was the start of a 419 scam. According to the email, Mrs Mavis Wanzik had made a donation in my name. So intrigued, I replied to see what this donation was. So I just asked Mavis, could you tell me more about this donation? I made up the name of Orson Cart just to see if she would reply to that email address. She had no problem with it. This is the reply she gave me. I'm not going to read through the whole email. You can pause the video if you really want to do that. She explained that she was the winner of a US lottery and she was going to donate $750,000 to 10 lucky people because, well, she's just generous that way. All I needed to do was send my full name, phone number, residential address, country, and importantly, an identity card in order that I could verify her story, she included a link to a real person named Mavis Wanjik, who had genuinely won the lottery and was being interviewed on CNN. Of course, our scammer was just impersonating her and had set up a Yahoo account under her name. When Mavis replied, I had a close look at the headers of the email. Normally, you'll find this under More or Advanced within an email client. What you really look for is the header called received from. There may well be several received from lines, but the one at the very bottom of the chain will be the one that is closest to the person who sent the email. Here you can see a record which seems to indicate that our scammer has been using a yahoo.com webmail server to send this email. So all it really tells me is that the person sending this email is using Yahoo webmail directly and is not using his own IP address. So I can't tell very much about this scammer other than he or she's probably not based in the USA. So I reply back to Mavis giving her some fake details, but of course I've got to produce an identity card with the same details. So a quick Photoshop later, and this is my new driving license. I sent this to her by email. Mavis seemed delighted with this, and she was very keen to direct me to the next part of the scam. I was to contact first delivery couriers who would give me a bank draft and they were to be contacted in Las Vegas, USA. I tried their phone number but there was no joy. Instead I had to just email them. To their credit they did a little bit of research into this part of the scam because if you look at the address on Google Maps it really is a post office in Las Vegas. It's called Postnet. So I did as requested and sent an email to first delivery couriers and I did get a swift response. This is what it looked like. I would receive the check if I sent them $301.30 by Western Union or MoneyGram, the old scammer favourite again. But I still wanted to find out a bit more about who was sending these emails. So once again, I looked at the receive from headers for this email. It told a different story. This time, the received from address wasn't from Yahoo's webmail. It was directly from the scammer. And it turned out that he was based in South Africa and the IP address indicated Johannesburg. And the ISP for that IP address is Cell C, who are based in Johannesburg as well. But it's sometimes possible to spoof IP addresses. So just to confirm this, I replied back to the couriers and told them that I had sent a Western Union receipt to the place that they had told me to. I gave them a link in the email which I hoped they would click because it would reveal their IP address. I've left some links in the description to describe exactly how this is done. However, this particular scammer didn't click that link. He obviously was aware that it could reveal exactly where he was located, so I had another trick up my sleeve. When I sent the email, I didn't send the email directly to the scammer and instead I used a system called readnotify.com. I've left a link to this in the description. Much like the IP loggers, readnotify allows you to see the IP address, DNS name and the browser being used. And according to the log, this guy seemed to be using a Samsung device. 
A quick Google search against that user agent string reveals that it's actually a Samsung S7 Edge. Quite an expensive phone, a $450 plus phone. And I also get yet another IP address which is also in Johannesburg. But this time the IP address isn't on a mobile network, it's on an ADSL or broadband network. Yes, this guy seems to be using the device from his home Wi-Fi. So short of getting a court order, that's probably about all I can find out about the people running this scam. But Mrs. Pearl Sean, who's running this courier service, claims that I haven't sent her any money. What a shock. So it's time to do a wee bit more scam baiting. This time, instead of attaching a link to the receipt, I tell Mrs. Pearl Sean that I'm going to attach the actual receipt. This is what I send to her. I do hope she's got good eyesight. I can tell she's getting a bit frustrated now because she sends me yet another email almost immediately telling me that she cannot view my attachment. And instead she's asked for the MTCN number in plain text. Oh well, sorry to disappoint you. So I send her one final email and tell her that the picture of the receipt should be much clearer. So this isn't quite the attachment that I sent to her. I sent her something which, let's face it, is never going to get published on YouTube. But suffice to say, she got the message. I did send her a few more emails to see if she could read my attachment okay, but strangely she never replied. Can't think why. As always, if you like my videos, please give them a thumbs up. Please do comment. I enjoy reading all of your comments. I'm also on Twitter at jimbrowning11. And if you can support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below. Thank you once again.